an outdoor summer party, a day on the boat, at the cottage, around the pool. Summer fun opens us up to additional risk when it comes to liability. We have lawyer David Hollingsworth on the program. He's going to answer some of your questions. We're going to talk about a groundbreaking case. But for the most part, we wanted to start by talking about how this great weather really does open us up for additional liability, David. It does. It does. I mean, obviously, Leanne, uh, we don't want to live in a bubble. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot of socializing that occurs during the summer months. Uh, things like backyard parties with pools, uh, boating, cottages, and all sorts of things. So. so host responsibility is a great thing to tackle first and foremost. So if you are hosting yeah. a party... Well, be responsible. I mean, they obviously, you know, let your common sense be your guide, but you have to know that as a host uh, of a party, you have a responsibility to your guests not to overserve them. Uh, you have a responsibility to your guests and their children to make sure that they're safe around a pool or sprinklers, that they aren't darting out into the street, uh, that they aren't, uh, you know, any undue risks, that, that, that you are, you know, you're doing your best to stem those. So suppose this long weekend you've invited a whole bunch of people up to the cottage to help build a deck. What happens in that case if someone slips, falls, hurts themselves? Well, I mean, in a, in a situation of, uh, you know, uh, if they're not in the course of their employment, if it's just friends, uh, what happens is you've got, uh, there's the Occupier's Liability Act. And the Occupier's Liability Act, assuming you're in Ontario, uh, says that you need to maintain your premises in a, in a, uh, in a state that's safe for their intended purpose. So if people are on your premises, uh, you, are, you have an obligation to make sure that they're safe. In the event that they are injured, then they may have a cause of action against you uh, in negligence um, for not keeping them safe on your property. What about boating? I mean, you have some insurance when you own a boat and you have to be licensed and all the rest, but what if something happens to someone you have, you're hosting on a boat? Yeah, well, I mean, boating is boating is interesting because, I mean, there are certain uh, navigation laws. You want to have insurance on your boat. If you're going to have people on your boat, you want to be responsible again with the drinking and everything else. Uh, no drinking um, if you're driving a boat, of course. But you have an obligation that uh, anyone on your boat, it's like any kind of motor vehicle, that you have to uh, ensure their safety. And to the extent that you don't and they are injured, you can be liable. Okay, so. this leads us into this very interesting case, a case that you... I don't know how many appeals were actually in, involved, right. and it's a case Two. that you just recently won for a client right. uh, that relates to a motor vehicle, and this is really important information for anyone. If you do not have an active driver's license, That's right. well, let's set the stage sure. uh, in terms of what happened, because there were three cases around the same time, right. three young men, all young men. Yeah, and, it, and the case that I ended up with, I had a young man who was, uh, he had no driver's license, and therefore he had no insurance of any sort, he wasn't a dependent on anybody, so he had no access to insurance whatsoever, but he did have a dirt bike and he rode this dirt bike on a dirt bike track um, and uh, and it was always only intended for a dirt bike track it was never going to be on the road it went over a jump uh, landed wrong ended up a, a paraplegic unfortunately and so he had very significant medical and rehabilitation needs beyond what OHIP provides um, but no insurance and so uh, we made an application to something called the uh, Motor Vehicle Accident Claims Fund, which is a, a fund of last resort. And wh what this does is for people involved in motor vehicle accidents who need this help, they, they provide it. They denied his claim on the basis that essentially uh, the Motor Vehicle Accident Claims Fund is there to protect, uh, let's say, a pedestrian on a roadway who is struck by the irresponsible motorist who doesn't have any insurance, not designed to protect somebody who is uh, on a dirt bike track, uh, on a dirt bike, uh, with no private insurance. So uh, the bottom line, the uh, others who were involved in this, because they had a driver's license and exactly. an insured vehicle, they were looked after in terms of their injury claim. They had their own private insurance that covered them, their so automobile what, policy So you them. would like viewers to know that if you're yeah. in that situation where you in fact don't have a driver's license but you do have a recreational vehicle, yeah. have insurance on the recreational absolutely. vehicle. Absolutely, absolutely. An ATV, uh, any kind of off-road vehicle, there's something called the Off-Road Vehicles Act, you can look it up online, it'll list the vehicles that are, they're required to have motor vehicle liability policies, you want to make sure that you've got it registered and you You've got access to insurance. So this young man was in a very bad situation for right. a number of years. I mean, he is still uh, yeah, paralyzed, sure. yeah. but uh, at least now he has some financial means to, as you said, get the care he needs. Well, that's just it. We got the motor vehicle accident. We went through a couple of appeals, and ultimately, uh, it was decided that the Mo motor vehicle accident claims fund did have to pay for his benefits. And we argued because it was a motor vehicle and because it ought to have been uh, insured, it falls within the definition of vehicles insured and accidents that are insured under the. Uh, 
under the Claims Fund Act. So the, the result of this case was that we broadened the scope of the medical and rehabilitation benefits available to the individuals who are injured in an accident. And in having you on the program, it just makes people aware that the, the best thing you can possibly do is carry that insurance. When we come back after the break, we have your questions for lawyer Dave Hollingsworth. And of course, you're invited to send him some as well. We'll uh, have more of Dave when we come back. No fault insurance and then uh, fault insurance. Um, if you're a Quebec resident, you would get your no fault, which is your accident benefits, rehab, and all of that from the SAAQ, Société d'Assurance, uh, Association d'Assurance du Québec. You get like physio and all that from them. Um, and then you, if you, if it's somebody else's fault and you're hurt and you have losses, you can sue in Ontario. Okay, the great short answer. We actually have time for a real quick one then. Okay. We are in the process of having a new kitchen put in and the contractor is charging us double the quote and it's not even finished yet. What uh -oh. can we do? Well, um, first thing you do is you look at the contract. It, assuming there's a contract, uh, usually uh, contractors' contracts are either a fixed price contract where they say, I'm doing all the work, here's the price, or more commonly, it's time and materials. Here's what I charge you uh, on an hourly basis. I'm going to keep track of my time, and you pay for the materials, and then, um, and then we, we send you a bill. But don't you legally have to be within a certain percentage of your quote? Um, no. Uh, a quote is a quote. And obviously, you know, you have this discussion, oh, well, we didn't, you know, a quote anticipate. is always subject to what you can't anticipate. And inevitably, there are extras, mm -hmm. and this is usually where, where the fight exists. So the key there is, number one, any, the parole evidence rule in Ontario says that anything in writing trumps anything that's discussed and your, your recourse is to, the, uh, is to the courts. We want to thank you very much. Dave Hollingsworth, Thanks. there's a link on our website to Dave's website if you have any questions for a future program. Thanks.